nothing is more expensive than bad information. Know the source. OneRadioNetwork.com Talk to Patrick now. 888-663-6386 Or email Patrick at OneRadioNetwork.com We're going to have lots of talk about herbs tomorrow with uh, Chris Gusa. Really interesting fellow. We're going to have fun with that. And also, um, well, I've been trying to reach a, a, an attorney in New Orleans who, uh, who's done a massive amount of research on the oil disaster in the Gulf. And as we've been alluding to over the past year, this is so much worse than what we're being told. And now there's another huge oil slick in the Gulf. Um, this is just, well, nothing is as it seems in the media, as you know, and as we've been cautioning you to not believe what the Japanese government are, are saying about the radiation. And now they're suggesting that the radiation levels in the water in Tokyo are twice the safe levels. And children shouldn't drink the water, but it's okay for the adults, which is really curious. In my opinion, there is no safe level of radiation. It's much like mercury. It's very, very dangerous. And what's going on over there, uh, we are not being told the real story. So, so be careful what you believe and what you read. Speaking of that, I'll, it's a great intro for Stephen Jacobson. Stephen Jacobson has been involved with this whole idea of mind control for a very long time. He has a uh, background in film, and that really got him interested, I guess, and to the research of mind control and the issues and the use of hypnotic programming in the mass media. His website is mindcontrolamerica.com. Stephen Jacobson, good morning. Good morning, Patrick. It's uh, my pleasure to be with you. Nice to be with you. So you start playing around with film and editing after a while, and you said, whoa. People can do a lot of stuff with an editing machine. Certainly can. Uh, uh, I had studied film at Boston University. Uh, I worked in the film industry for about 13 years. Uh, worked in a number of different capacities, but uh, primarily as a film editor. And working as an editor, it was very easy to see how plastic and moldable media reality is. How, how easy it is to change the meaning of an event, to change the meaning of what someone says through simple editing. And so I, I was very well aware uh, of how manipulative the media could be, but I didn't fully appreciate the extent to which we are all manipulated by media, including those people who work in it, until I was given the results of private medical research investigating programming and deprogramming, and that really opened up my eyes. This mm -hmm. is back in 1980. I, I was working in New York City at the time, and when I, I studied the material, uh, it uh, ultimately uh, and eventually led to my leaving the career I was pursuing to investigate this whole issue of mind control and mental manipulation. Mm. So this uh, research, Stephen, was this, um, was this an, uh, research that goes into how powerful it is if you put subliminal things is is that the kind of research that that you were shown well uh my, my father was trained as a hypnotist ah. and he worked as a counselor and a hypnotherapist and a researcher and consultant to the medical profession for more than 20 years so and so he uh, over a period of 11 years of that research developed an audio that doctors at one time wrote prescriptions for their patients to have the audio to aid in the treatment of different health problems, physical mm. problems, emotional problems, psychological problems, and uh, uh, it helped people. Uh, it, the audio, very unusual, uh, nothing like it out there. It's uh, uh, self-help, self-improvement audio, but it, it helped retrain the patient to to relearn something that comes natural to us as children, that is how to be comfortable and relaxed. Mm -hmm. uh, that all health problems, 
stress, anxiety, tension, uh, a, a major factors in all health problems. So this was to help uh, people uh, not only relax, but also the, the verbal content is a, uh, a deprogramming message to uh, solicit the aid of the subconscious to dissolve negative programming, all the negative program that we have accumulated throughout our life and replace it with a positive health-based program. Yeah. And so uh, he, t- he turned over his research to me. Uh, I-, I was aware of the research. Uh, we had talked about it, but uh, uh, one day I got a phone call and uh, uh, he wanted to see me. I went and saw him and uh, wanted, he wanted to know if, if I was interested in picking up on the research and um, uh, where, uh, where he had left off. And uh, I, I, I was, I saw the implications as far as um, my work in media was concerned, and then uh, studied the material, uh, used the audio on myself, and made note of uh, its uh, effects uh, and health benefits. And at the same time, uh, people were always giving him material and information. Uh, uh, he was working with very difficult cases, p- uh, cases that doctors had given up hope on and was able to help people. And so uh, it, uh, uh, w- someone had given him several books dealing with the conspiracy theory of history. Uh, one of them was called uh, The Occult Technology of Power. Mm-hmm. And I went through the bibliographies on, on these uh, books, and uh, he was right. I was interested in it. Uh, and uh, I began uh, to seek out alternative sources of information on all kinds of subjects, uh, politics, economics, history, uh, psychology, religion, philosophy, you name it. I, I was uh, looking to see what was out there because, uh, frankly, um, I had... Uh, a long felt that uh, I I didn't really understand what was going on out here. I, I knew this as a child. Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, and I go into the public education system, and the question I had for myself was, how do I know that what they're telling me is true? I have to give them back what they're giving me if I want to get a good grade in our academic uh, uh, future and our ability to uh, uh, to earn a living is directly tied to um, regurgitating back what we're given in, in so-called public education. And I go through the system, go through uh, you know, through high school and in uh, and through college, and I still have these questions: What's really going on? So a number of things didn't make sense to me. Uh, I get out into the workplace, I still have these questions, and so everything came to a head when I received this um, research, because I I was searching. And it was the opportunity to educate myself, take the responsibility uh, of uh, seeking out uh, the knowledge that uh, that would give me a greater insight and understanding about what was going on out here. And so that that was the beginning. That led to the research. Peter Jacobson is with us, Mind Control America.com. If you care to join us, 888-663-6386. Email patrick at oneradionetwork.com. Patrick at oneradionetwork.com. And uh, we're going to have a good time this morning talking with Peter. Sounds really interesting stuff. If you, uh, uh, once again, care to join us, you're welcome to do that either by email or telephone. Well, P- uh, Stephen, let's go back to the days of, say, Huntley, Brinkley, Walter Cronkite, and such, where they were the major forces driving where people got their information back when, when I was a kid in, in, in the 60s and the late 50s and such. And do you have any way of knowing if it was a simply the fact that Walter Cronkite or Huntley Brinkley or Dan Rather who followed or were just making up stories to fulfill an agenda or there actual were there actual subliminal things going on back then do you have any way of knowing yes uh do have a way of knowing and i'll, I'll preface it by saying that all media is propaganda all no media except. is propaganda all mass media is propaganda meaning that Which, it's 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 a shade of the truth well, meaning that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, the effect.
effect of it is determined by the intent of, uh, of those who are producing it. So either it's what differentiates it, uh, one type of propaganda for another, is whether it's meant uh, to uplift society, to provide uh, people with information that they need uh, to, uh, for the betterment of uh, everyone, or is there another agenda uh, being advanced to, uh, 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 to manipulate and control people? So that, that's uh, the intent behind it, and who's paying the bills. And, and this was very clear w- with my working in film, uh, whether it's a sponsored film, educational film, documentary, even theatrical or fictional story. There is a point of view being presented. And again, what differentiates it is the intent uh, behind it. Now, there are two primary means by which people are manipulated and controlled. One is very basic and very simple, and that is through simple control of information. Uh, If we don't have all the facts on any given subject, uh, our judgment can only be as good as the quality of our information. And if there are big gaping holes in that, if we uh, have been given half lies, half truths, and outright lies, and uh, then uh, it's going to be uh, very difficult for us to really get a fix on, on what's happening. And so, and that's, and what contributes to that, and this has been a long-standing trend, not just in the communications uh, uh, industry, but in all areas of society, and that is the consolidation of ownership of of, uh, of uh, different media uh, in the control of fewer and fewer hands, and that uh, that facilitates the coordination of propaganda using all media. Now, the second means by which we are manipulated and controlled is by manipulating people's mental states. The first order of business for a propagandist or an advertiser is to create the circumstances where their message is going to be received, uh, uh, create circumstances where uh, an optimum mental state is created for the reception of their message. And that state of mind that is optimum for that is the hypnotic state of mind. Hypnotic? Yes. Mm -hmm. So so the the mind or the the brain is available to suck in some information. Right. Well, what happens is that the uh, uh, conscious faculties, uh, 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 analysis is put on hold so that information can be uh, uh, directed uh, directly to the subconscious without any interference, without uh, thinking about it. Straight to the now, subconscious. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, the the point of it, the point of programming, is to build a conditioned response in the subject or your target population so that people will respond automatically without thinking with a preference for a particular product or a preference for a, p- a particular I- idea. So that's the, that's the whole point. Uh, that's the, uh, uh, the procedure for a propagandist or an advertiser. Create those circumstances and get the message uh, and get people to respond to it without thinking. Because if we, we, if we have the opportunity to mm-hmm. think about the message mm-hmm. and determine whether or not uh, it's true for us or if we're going to accept it or not, it gets cataloged that way in the memory banks of our subconscious with a uh, ID code, uh, and whenever we're uh, presented with that piece of information again, get, that gets triggered, and we—it's uh, like a, a retrieval system. We uh, we bring it up and then um, respond to that piece of information in a, in a similar manner in which we had responded to it previously. But this is so, done. This is done with a very sophisticated method to get the, the brand name or whatever they're selling into the subconscious, they know what they're doing. Yes, they do know what they're doing because the mind control issue is uh, nothing new. It's ancient. So the, the principles of hypnotic uh, suggestion and programming are, is ancient. What, what is different in so-called modern times in which we live is the technology that allows for the implementation of these ancient principles on a massive scale to influence the, the thinking and behavior of large numbers of people. With digital and such. Yes. Yeah. Now, the uh, television is a, a great example for uh, explaining how this all works. Uh, because television, 
the medium itself induces a hypnotic state of mind in the people who are watching it. If you think back to whenever you have observed young children in front of a TV set or older adults, they, they have this glassy-eyed, vacant look in their eyes, and that's because they are in a trance state. And we can also catch ourselves going under as we're watching TV, losing all sense of time and place. And uh, our hours can feel like minutes going by uh, because we're in a trance state. So it, the media, electronic media, TV in particular, is literally plugging into our nervous system. Uh, there's an interface there. And because it induces a trance state, uh, we are more receptive and, uh, to programming and manipulation and highly suggestible, more so than at any other time. So that what, that's what makes television the ideal instrument for propagandizing the population. And, and not just television, the arts in general, historically, have been used in that way. Mm -hmm. Arts and entertainment. Uh, P it's Stephen Jacobson, can you, can you explain to us uh, a little more detail of what this trance state is when it has to do with with the mind. Yes. What, what's going on there? The uh, a hypnotist will use uh, see the uh, the whole focus or point uh, of hypnotic programming is to get the subject or your target population to focus the mind on one or more of the five senses. In the case of media, we're talking about sight and hearing. Mm -hmm. But a hypnotist will use his voice in a sing-song kind of pattern to get his patient or subject to lock on to the sound of the voice, repetitive with uh, uh, that repetitive pattern. And what happens is that the mind goes blank. What do you no mean blank? Thinking. What do you mean blank? Oh, so no conscious mind... thinking occurring. Mm -hmm. So we're just uh, we, we are a sponge soaking up uh, the information that's being presented to us. It's a the hypnotic state is a natural state. We go in and out of it throughout the day. Sure. It's a it's a twilight state. It's like when you're just waking in the morning or just going drifting off into sleep at night. It's a uh, uh, there's no mental activity going on. So so it would be it would be likened to a more a favorable or positive Stephen Jacobson. Uh, a state in meditation with yes. no, with no thought, but but the TV can take the kids or unknowing folks into that space, and it just sucks up whatever they're showing. Yes, it's, 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 the hypnotic state of mind and meditative state of mind are similar, but with a very uh, a very major difference. In the hypnotic state of mind, you're in a trance state without conscious awareness. In a meditative state, you're in that state, a zone, but with full conscious awareness. Is uh, what that's the difference. So that, that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, the way television does this automatically, and, and what, what induces hypnosis is a re repetitive pattern, a repetitive sound pattern, a repetitive light pattern. What's happening with TV, it's the very nature of the technology. The image that's projected on the screen flickers. It we don't see it consciously, hmm. but subconsciously, that flicker induces the trance state. And then there are different techniques used to deepen that state. Uh, uh, flashing words, flashing numbers, uh, like prices flashing on and off the screen in a TV commercial. Uh, movement, uh, like at the beginning of your news broadcasts, um, local and national. Uh, you have a... Uh, movement graphics moving at the uh you have a repetitive musical theme all these techniques used to maintain and deepen that trance state using uh using these repetitive patterns now what's interesting about the news broadcast and you, you mentioned Walter Cronkite mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, uh the uh, newscasters that uh, our generation yours and mine grew up with uh, Huntley Brinkley report and all get a number of things happening here. One, if you think about it, the way newscasters speak, they all have this pattern of speaking that's uh, very similar, regardless of their ethnic background, whether they be black, white, Hispanic, Oriental, with few exceptions, they all sound alike. And that speech pattern is very similar to the speech pattern of a hypnotist. 
the eye contact made with the viewer. Uh, the broadcaster is looking directly into the camera and into the eyes of the TV watcher, another hypnotic technique. The, the broadcaster is an authority figure, which encourages people to accept uh, the information that's being presented to them. So when people uh, trust and respect the source of the information, there'll be a tendency to, expect, uh, to accept it, even if people don't understand it. And then when the information is repeated over and over again, that builds that conditioned response so that whenever we are presented with that piece of information again, we respond automatically without thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, an example uh, that uh, all of us have experienced is, uh, have you ever bought something and then later on wondered why you bought it? Yeah. And that's because of this mechanism being triggered. And you could uh, uh, take it a step further and then with, uh, have you ever done or said something and then later on wondered, well, why did I do that? Why did I say that? It's because of this, uh, this having been triggered. And uh, so uh, you get a number of things happening here. The television is by far the most powerful weapon of psychological warfare in history. Oh. And I know a lot of people don't view television in those terms as a weapon because for so many people, uh, it's become a member of the family. Uh, it's in many rooms of the household. People, after a hard day's work, they, they, they come home uh, tired. For many people, it's the, t the TV is a primary source of information and news and entertainment. And so they... Uh, they plop themselves down on their favorite easy chair, sofa, reach for the remote control, and the mind goes on hold. And that's where the problem yeah. is, because they go into a trance. Stephen Jacobson, uh, we've heard about this flicker. Is that something that is intrinsically in film or digital, or is it something that they, the people that control, put in there? Well, no, that was uh, inherent in the, uh, the technology itself. It's just in there. Yeah, it's just in there, and because uh, in the case of film, see, we're, we're only we're seeing a series of still pictures, uh, and that give the uh, because they're projected at uh, twenty four frames a second. We don't see the space between each picture. We're just seeing uh, we're seeing the movement, it's an illusion of movement that takes advantage of uh, how uh, uh, how our senses work and how we perceive things. However. With the switch over to digital, that's opened up a, a whole new arena because, see, the, uh, this is uh, an interesting point to consider, that uh, the government's insistence on the switch over from analog to digital, oh. that uh, they weren't interested in, in our seeing with greater c clarity the crappy programs that we're, we are assaulted with. Uh, there, there was another agenda uh, there, and that uh, that by having the system uh, locked in, kind of where uh, by digitizing the media, it, it allowed allows it to connect all communications to the internet. And because the digital sys, uh, signal there's a, a, a delay, it allows for altering the information almost instantaneously so changes can be changes can be made uh in the information that's being broadcast it also facilitates the the use of subliminal messages implanting messages both uh, in the soundtrack and um, in the in the picture itself see we uh subliminal messages uh it's a uh, subliminal perception it's a process where we receive and respond to visual and sound information without being aware of it. Uh, the message, it can be in the form of printed words, it can be pictures, symbols, voices presented on the soundtrack so faintly, or pictures uh, projected so rapidly we're not consciously aware of having seen or heard anything. However, we respond to it just the same, even though we're not consciously aware of it. Now, when this first came to the attention of the public back in the 1950s, uh, primarily through Vance Packard's book, The Hidden Persuaders. 
uh, in, in which he revealed that American industry at the time was researching the use of subliminal technology to encourage people to buy their products. At the same time, there was a, a psychologist, uh, James Vickery, who was doing research in subliminal messages. Uh, one was done, a famous one, in a New Jersey uh, uh, movie theater, where the message is, hungry, eat popcorn, and drink Coca-Cola, sure, yeah. were, were flashed on the screen, right. one three-thousandth of a second, every five seconds, and it led to increase in sales for both those products, for popcorn and Coca-Cola. Sure. So, but, so, yeah, so what you're saying, though, if I hear you, with this move to digital for television, this is it's a lot easier to 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 do this stuff, right? Uh, e- e- yes, a uh, lot easier uh, just because of the just you're yes. more sophisticated just because yes. of the technology. So the same thing then would would hold true for film. There's a big push, of course, to try to get the filmmakers to do digital. Well, it's cheaper than doing film, but then the same thing can be done in films with subliminal as well. Oh, for sure, and it has been. Uh, the um, see this the, the power of the media uh, is uh, was known right right from the beginning of the development of the technology because of the the principles of hypnotic programming having been used uh, for so for so long. The, these things developed, interestingly enough, uh, through religion, the arts. Uh, an outgrowth of religion, where the arts, um, music, uh, theater, literature, uh, used as a delivery system, uh, as a means of educating or transferring information from one generation to the next about uh, uh, how things work. Uh, Storytelling is the oldest means of transmitting information about what's right and wrong, how society works, uh, what's acceptable and unacceptable behavior, that there isn't much difference between primitive man sitting fixated in front of the flickering light of a campfire, telling stories about uh, uh, how things work, not much difference between that and modern man sitting fixated in front of the flickering light of a television, receiving information of it's doing the same thing mm-hmm. through the format of of the story, of storytelling. Okay, and, uh, uh, we need to take a quick break here. Stephen Jacobson, Mind Control America. We're going to get to some of your emails. And uh, if you want to participate by telephone, 888 It's One Radio Network, and we're live every morning, 9 to 11 o'clock, all about herbs tomorrow. I'm with Al Carter. He's the world's foremost authority on rebound exercise. We're told, Al Carter, that if you jump up and down on one of these little trampolines, that you can build bone density. Is there any uh, scientific uh, backing for that? NASA had a problem where the astronauts were shot up in space, and in 14 days they lost 15% of their bone mass. We have had people now who have rebounded for 20 years, and they have bone density of a 35-year-old woman. So that's actually been measured by docs, eh? That's measured by doctors, and we receive this back from the people who have Uh actually done it. So for menopausal ladies who do the osteoporosis thing, these little trampolines are cool. They're the best form of exercise they can get. Al Carter, that's what he says. He's the authority. Order yourself a rebounder right now. Front page, look at the display for the rebounders on OneRadioNetwork.com. Go through PayPal, very secure. You don't have to be a PayPal member. Any credit card, ship it via UPS in three days or so. It's all yours right on the front page of OneRadioNetwork.com. Could saving 15% of your money in gold coins really save you money on your car insurance? No. But it sure will give you a lot of peace of mind in uncertain times. Protecting your wealth is a great idea in an economy where money is being inflated by the rapid expansion of the money supply by central banks all over the world. Learn to protect your wealth. We can be reached directly to answer your questions at 1-800-878-2646. Or visit us on the web at usgoldcoins.com. We are listener supported. One radio network. Talk to Patrick now. 888-663-6386. Or email patrick at oneradionetwork.com. Stephen Jacobson, mindcontrolamerica.com. 
America. It's Mind Control in America.com. Oh, I'm sorry, Stephen. Mind Control in America.com. Okay, I want to ask you, and this went on this morning. I want to get your opinion on this. This morning on National Public Radio, and I can only assume if it was there, it was probably every place else. I do not have a television, so I don't know what goes on there. But they said something very clearly. The Japanese government announced that the radiation in the drinking water in Tokyo was two times the amount safe for children, and but it was okay for adults. Now, that's an obvious uh, message that may or may not be true, that it's safe for adults. But that is an overt way, one could say, if it's not true, which for the record, I don't think it is. Anything is, I think, is dangerous. But that's an interesting way to tell the people that if you're an adult, things are okay. Now, that being said, that is one way of getting some message across. The, Absolutely. The fa- it's, yeah, of course. It's and conflicting it's conflicting messages uh, at of, that. Of course. What I'd like to know, Stephen, is, is the fact that I heard that on radio or I might see that on a YouTube video, would it be a different impact for the receiver? If you trust the source, then yes. If I trust... The, the radio, source of the information. The radio station or... Mm, but if you saw why something, see something on YouTube, you don't really trust YouTube. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, it's... A little, little gray area there. Yeah, it's a little gray there. But, uh, f- for example, uh, uh, if it's coming via a news broadcast... Okay. Then if you trust that as a means of receiving information, as the population has been conditioned and programmed to do, it's the go back to even before the days of television. By the way, I don't have a television either. I got rid of it a long time ago. <laughs> Make your head explode. Uh, well, and it it, uh, it puts a lot of things in your head that uh, uh, work us over, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's part of it's p- part of a major part of psychological warfare is to induce uh, stress, anxiety, fear in the population, and over a prolonged period of time, uh, it, it not only affects people's health, but it affects how they perceive things. Yeah. If we're all uptight, stressed out, then a lot of things are going to happen right in front of us, and we're, not gonna, we're literally not going to see it. And that happens, uh, uh, Stephen, because of the actual message as well as the technology, two, twofold. That, yes, okay. that is correct. All right. Yeah. Now, before the days of television, the, the precursor to the news broadcast, uh, you had uh, the uh, newsreels that were shown in, uh, in the movie theaters. Sure, yeah. March of Time, Path A News. Uh, and and the, the has, uh, it's been well documented that the, the so-called news was replete with uh, examples of uh, staging events using impersonators of celebrities and, and public figures. And, and uh, 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 the news that was presented was fictional, but it was presented in a particular format uh, for people who uh, had been conditioned to accept that as the means by which they uh, received true factual information. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the days of radio, same thing. The famous broadcast, uh, uh, Orson Welles' broadcast in uh, uh, 1938, Halloween Eve, uh, of, uh, it was a dramatization of H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. It caused panic. People actually thought that New Jersey was being invaded by Martians. Mm-hmm. And the reason they did was the dramatization was done as a news broadcast. You had your anchor person, you had the reporters out in the field, had, they'd bring in outside experts commenting on what was happening. And uh, in spite of the fact that they had disclaimers throughout the program, people thought it was real because they had already been conditioned to the format of the news broadcast as the means by which we received Oh, uh, I back. see. So right. it's that, it's that, it's that uh, subconscious trust kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, this yeah. is the news. Well, boy, that really goes on big time today, doesn't it? Where people, oh, it sure people does. believe if they, if they hear it on the news that it's, it, it happened. 
or that if they see it on television, that uh, it's a reality. But you remember the uh, movie Wag the Dog when it came oh, out? Oh, sure, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was uh, at an interesting time where uh, uh, President uh, Bill Clinton... Uh, with the, with and, the rockets and, and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, very, uh, but it, it's uh, uh, a, a very uh, well uh, put together presentation about uh, how this stuff works. Uh, the, the movie before that, uh, Network, with sure. Peter Finch, an uh, excellent movie, movie yeah. about the media and, and uh, its effect on the, uh, on the population. And uh, we, we are the most manipulated and controlled uh, society in history, uh, primarily because of all the programming and conditioning that uh, we uh, are, have undergone through both the mass media and public education. I would you suspect, couldn't have effective yeah, yeah. propaganda S without those two. Sure, excuse me for interrupting, Stephen, but I would suspect, and, and people argue like the, the folks that do the Waldorf School and the fellow who wrote Crack and the Cosmic Egg, egg name is escaping me at the moment, um, that, the, that when the little ones watch television, television it's, even, it's even more dangerous. Absolutely, because children have a tendency uh, to Trust. accept what's being uh, shown as yeah. real. Yeah. And not only that, uh, not too long ago, uh, back uh, in December of this year, uh, it was reported, U.S. News uh, World Report, a, uh, had, a, had a story about a, a study that appeared in the archives of uh, pediatric and adolescent medicine about babies watching television. Mm -hmm. and they came to the study came to the conclusion that it was bad for babies' brains to be watching television. That in, in spite of so-called good TV, educational TV, uh, that uh, uh, there was no there was no difference. That it was stunting the cognitive and delaying cognitive development and language development in babies and the recommendation was that by the American Academy of Pediatrics was that babies under age two should watch no television at all yes and there, there are, there's others like I said and his name is Joseph Chilton Pierce uh, they they recommend that folks don't the kids don't even do computers or TV till they're 10 because of the damage that it does to the to the to the brain and there, there could be a good argument this is from Keith New Hampshire, would you ask Stephen if flickering light technology on TV is also being transmitted over the Internet? Absolutely. Like, like surfing the web, streaming videos, exposing us on a similar hypnosis? You got the, yeah, uh, uh, the same thing's happening because the screen flickers. It does and, flicker. And, uh, and people uh, can uh, stare at that screen hours on end as if it was just moments and minutes, just lose themselves in, in that activity. And because this such a, a glut of information on the Internet, uh, pe many people are suffering from uh, information overload, sensory overload, because it's just so much of that we requires uh, uh, being discerning about what we're going to accept as, as being true. So uh, it, because of that glut of information, and the sensory overload, it causes a, a kind of a, a paralysis of a, in action, yeah. people taking action what? Uh, to re resolve whatever problems uh, uh, may be confronting them. Yeah, so, fair yeah, enough. The same thing's happening with the, with the computer. Caller, yeah. uh, what's your first name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Francis from Edmonton. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, how are you doing? And, uh, I mean, Patrick. We're well, thanks. Good. And Stephen? Yeah. Um, uh, it's nice to get to know you. Um, Thank I you. think your uh, your wisdom you have wisdom that uh, not too many people have, and I really appreciate your uh, your calling, right, and what you're doing with it. And I have one question for you, and maybe another one later after you answer this one. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with the works of Michael Tessarian? And if you are. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to hear a brief critique on what you think of Michael, if you're aware of his work, because it's right along, it's parallel uh, with what you're doing, and he's written volumes and volumes and mm -hmm. produced many hours of video, right? Yes. No, I've seen some of his work, uh, excellent research, and see, the, the real issue 
the mind, the foundation of the mind control issue, it's it's about religion. It's it's about spirituality. The mind is the gateway to the soul. That's sure. why that the mind control issue, and we, the fundamental issue for mankind, the fundamental problem is that we don't know who and what we are. That we people have misidentified themselves as the physical body and as the mind, and make all these decisions based on that assumption that misidentity and we've been sold the bill of goods that that's what we are that we can become happy by buying things and advertising is based on that uh, creating an artificial need uh making us feel that we need that uh, something that is going to make our lives better but ultimately make us happy so it's right. that idea that's steve it's that idea steven if you're in a state and you you forget who you are as soul, a spiritual being, then it's easy to to think that if you drink the right beer, you're going to meet the the right woman. Yes. As simple as yeah. that. Yeah. Simple as that. Did you have a second part, Francis? Um, yeah, I, I just have a comment here, like a, a very good friend of mine. Uh, this is a quote from a very good friend of mine. I won't mention his name. But his question to everybody is, are we here forgetting are we here for giving? Okay, well, that's that's very nice. Yeah, yeah, and and, and the Buddhists and many and many uh, spiritual practices, they do speak in this idea of self remembering, huh? To remember that we are spiritual beings, we're not the body or the mind, and then we have to be careful when we watch this stuff because I would suppose that folks listening here are even more conscious because of our programming and the way we speak here, Stephen Jacobson, than the mass amount of people, God love them, who are watching six hours of TV every night. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Very troublesome. Yeah. Very troublesome. It, it, it certainly is because it's created a particular mindset in the population where uh, people are confused. Don't people you find it interesting... I find it fascinating how the powers that were with the with the collaboration of the media have been able to sell the word terrorist and terrorism over the last 10 years. Oh yes. Oh, well, it's, see, it's like a brand name that it beats out Coca-Cola. Uh absolutely the the essence of psychological warfare is to confuse the meaning of words and infiltrate the mind with conflicting concepts. George Orwell uh, called this process uh, Newspeak. Yeah. And uh, there are many examples of it, not, not only these that, which you've given, but uh, one that uh, uh, is so common that we don't even think about it, and that uh, uh, is uh, uh, on our currency, Federal Reserve notes. Yeah. The word federal hmm. implies that uh, the Federal Reserve is a government institution. Right. But it's not. All right. It's no more uh, a part of the government than uh, Federal Laundry, Federal Express. Uh, but the name was chosen intentionally to deceive the public into thinking that it was part of the government when it's not. It's a private corporation owned and operated by foreign and domestic banks, and it's a business operated for profit. That's right. Yeah. That's the word right. dollar is Do another example. Oh, yeah. that uh, It's gone through a, a transformation where uh, it is, a dollar is a unit of measurement for gold and silver coin. It's like, a, it's like an inch or a quart uh, or a mile. But uh, people have been programmed to think of a dollar as both money and a measure of money, and, and, and that's, not, that's illogical. It's like uh, calling a quart milk. Yeah, well, we do uh, quite a bit of that talk. I appreciate that you understand that. I do think it's fascinating. And oh, I, I'm curious, though, from another level of how, and I've been in radio since 1968, of how... The powers that were and the, the people that own these six or seven corporations and own all the media, 
I never, I, I, I never experienced Stephen Jacobson, somebody telling me what to, to say. Uh, I'm, I'm curious of how this gets done today. Well, the, there has long been a relationship, long-standing relationship between government and the media. Uh, it's a Washington, New York, Hollywood axis. And the media has become, in effect, the fourth branch of government. Hmm. And it being so important because of its programming and conditioning capacity to control and manipulate the population. The, the so-called elite controllers, uh, the power behind government, which is basically uh, uh, economic power, uh, historically government has been the handmaid in the private wealth, and that's what uh, provides for the continuity of government, uh, regardless of uh, what political party is uh, in, uh, in power. Uh, there is uh, a continuity. The country goes in the same direction because a particular agenda is being followed. And the only way for a small number of people, uh, and this is a small number of people who uh, comprise the, the ruling class, uh, the only way they can control, manipulate, and govern large numbers of people is through uh, illusion and through deception, which uh, makes the, the media so extremely important. There may not always be instances of being uh, being told what to say, but there certainly is selection in uh, in what is broadcast, what news is selected. And if you notice, uh, it doesn't matter what uh, network you're watching, you're seeing the same stories. And very often, if you have uh, a number of TVs on and, and watching uh or just switching very quickly, uh, even the order of the stories very often are, are very similar, uh, showing this this kind of coordination. Uh, even when I was working uh, in, in the media, whoever is paying the bills is determining what the content is. And again, it's all propaganda. It, 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 it's either propaganda for good or for ill. And, and, and it's easy enough, Stephen, as you know, to, to get rid of somebody who is is too inquisitive and that happened to me over the years i was fired more than often more often than not because i i just never could just do dumb stuff well what was that uh, uh <laughs> former speaker of the house tip o'neill uh, said oh uh, no well, sam rayburn uh said that uh, to get along you gotta go along yeah to get along he was talk- it was, he, he's talking about government but uh but it, it applies to uh, uh industry business as well because uh government is Big business, uh, uh, Stephen. What do you make of this idea that so often you, you see films that that portray what is going to happen, what the military is going to do, or and all this stuff? What is that about? Fear and uh, keep, keep the people off balance. You got you're using the media on one end of the uh, this vice and, uh, and manipulation of the economy on the other end, because uh, psychological warfare and economic warfare, they, they work together in this kind of twin pincer movement, putting the squeeze on the population so that people don't know if they're coming or going. They, they're kept in a, a state of anxiety and fear, uh, looking for a glimmer of hope and, and trying to resolve uh, the world's problems so that anyone who comes along with uh, with a any twist in the presentation who's offering uh, change and hope uh, people will lock on to that and will uh, be willing to give up some of their uh, rights for the comfort and the promise of security mm-hmm mm-hmm now, I, I just want to mention very briefly uh, some of the content on the audios that are available on the uh, Mind Control in America. Yeah, I was looking at that website. this morning. This looks great. And, and it's, first of all, let me uh, congratulate you for putting these things out at a really affordable price. I really appreciate that. So much of this well, stuff is... Uh, is like- it's uh, want to help. And the, the, first, uh, the, the first step uh, in the process of reversing what's occurred is education, basic education, information. Uh, uh-huh. Most people don't think about the things that affect them subconsciously because they don't uh, know what to look for until 
uh, they're exposed to this information. Someone comes along or points it out to them, and then they can see and understand what's happening. And, and as most people uh, are not thinking about why they th- think and believe some of the things that they do. A lot of things people uh, take for granted, accept because out of habit, and we mustn't forget that we were all born into a system of lies and deception. Do you Our have, parents were yeah. born into a system of lies and deception that we've become accustomed to and consider normal, and uh, that keeps us... Uh, uh, ke- ke- keeps us in this state where we are susceptible con- right. to control. Now, what do you have on your, underneath the, uh, the, the training CDs that folks can use to maybe clear out the clutter of the mind? Somebody, right. Yeah. The, right now, I've got uh, uh, three, uh, three audios available uh, on CD, compact disc. They're also, I also have them uh, on audio cassette for those people who still have uh, right. audio cassettes. Uh, the younger generation doesn't even know what an audio cassette is, but right. uh, uh, but uh, some of us still have that. Uh, the first audio is titled Mind Control in America. It's a summary of the mind control issue, an overview, defining the principles involved, how it works, uh, describing the techniques, giving the listener examples uh, so that... Uh, and I also use the techniques I talk about so that the listener has a frame of reference to be able to recognize these techniques when they observe them being used. Uh, the, uh, the presentations have music and sound effects. They're very tightly scripted because there's a lot of information there, and they're meant to be listened to more than once. Also, for those people who understand, have an understanding of what's going on, very often it, it's difficult to... Uh, share information with family and friends, uh, and especially on, on these topics. And so these are educational aids, tools to uh, assist in that process of sharing information. It's just a matter of sitting people down, let them hear the presentation, and it serves as a point of departure for further discussion. So the, the first audio, Mind Control in America, that was followed by the audio, Wake Up America, also about mind control, but as it applies to money and economics. And again, Mm -hmm. psychological warfare and economic warfare uh, work together, and um, uh, it's been, uh, both are being waged, have been for a very long time, against America. And this is a global issue, uh, affecting not just America, but it's uh, affecting the uh, entire world. Uh, The third audio is the audio that my father did. The personal uh, comfort training? Personal comfort training is, is the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, the information is on the website uh, uh, yeah. about uh, his research and about that audio. Uh, I have two websites, the mindcontrolinamerica.com, and then one just for my father's audio, uh, which is uh, the website is personalcomforttraining.com. Personalcomforttraining.com. But again, the, there's a link on uh, from the Mind Control in America uh, website to uh, my father's tape. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the uh, excuse me, uh, the personal comfort is more of a self hypnosis personal growth idea. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, it, it is a deprogramming, uh, reprogramming audio, and also uh, a relaxation conditioning. The uh, uh, most people are not using their full breathing apparatus. Uh, their breathing is very shallow. And so when uh, uh, you're breathing slowly and deeply and exhaling uh, the so-called bad air and getting... Uh, uh, it, it, oxi- it facilitates oxygenating the blood. Yeah, it really, it's if very people important. are not getting a, enough oxygen, they can't think clearly. So again, uh, it's an aid both f- for physical health and mental health, psychological health. So okay. the, all three audios are kind of a, a deprogramming package. Yeah. Uh, the information audios, uh, Mind Control in America and Wake Up America, and then my father's uh, personal comfort training. Okay, fair enough. Let's take this call. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Um, my name is Tony. You have to speak up, Tony. Speak up. Okay. Go. My name is Tony. I'm calling from Oregon here. Go ahead. You're and on the air. I'm listening to your conversation, and one of the first things that jumped in my mind, I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, uh, it's a song by Frank Zappa called I Am the Slime. I Am a Slime? I Am the Slime, like oh. I apostrophe M. Right. Um, any, and anybody out there, <clears throat> to reinforce what you guys are talking about, uh, you listen to the song, and, well, you guys can Google it after 
after the show, whatever. Okay. And it just really reinforces um, everything you guys are saying. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, thanks for the call from Morgan. Yeah, um, I guess folks, artists and such over the years have have tried to warn other people when they know that the jig is up, like the Beatles and stuff. Oh, yes, uh, and, and, and music is a whole n- another area uh, that uh, employs these techniques. Po- uh, popular music, uh, all, all popular culture, movies, TV, music, they carry messages, uh, and it's not just entertainment. It, it, entertainment is not value-free. It, it has ideological content. It presents a worldview that influences the people who are watching or listening. So uh, we, we've kind of we've got this disconnect, thinking that entertainment is harmless, when it's the most important uh, a delivery system of propaganda because it influences people without their conscious awareness, and that's the ultimate in in controlling people in society yeah. is to do it without them being aware of it. Mind control in America dot com. Stephen Jacobson. Before I go, Stephen, I have something that I wanted to ask you about and see if you could shed a little light on. I'm a real film buff, and I I really enjoy the the feel, the texture, the the depth of field in film, and do not like that hard digital kind of stuff. And even adjust my TV to to make it look more film because for me film is more real and it's easier for me to 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 jump into the story the digital seems flat and hard and and doesn't seem real which is that exactly opposite of what the powers that were are pushing and i'm and i'm curious about my experience and what you think about that uh an interesting point because the 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 quality of the image uh uh, the difference between film and video is is very marked. Very. Uh, and and uh, most uh, see when I was doing uh, when, when I was in the film industry, it was very tactile. Uh, you're editing uh, a sixteen millimeter, a thirty five millimeter film. Uh, every everything has been digitized now, so it's uh, making it uh, more manageable as far as uh, control is concerned. But it does uh, uh, it. it it does have a different quality to it, for sure. But, but perhaps that the folks growing up now, are, their brains are more digitally mm, mm, used to that format, and it's as real to them as as maybe all my years of watching film. It's the reason I don't like the, the hardness. Good, good point. Do you because, think? Uh, because of this electronic interface with our nervous system. Uh, See, it, it literally plugs in a nervous system. A young child watching TV can sit there motionless. And then when they're away from TV, they get all this nervous energy. They can't focus their attention. The reason for this is that the, the cutting styles, the quick uh, editing styles that were developed uh, in TV commercials and music videos where you're cutting mm-hmm. uh, from one shot to the other very quickly, from one angle to, to the next, it causes a, a corresponding chemical electrical response in the brain, releasing endorphins that have a drug-like effect on the body. Oh, the actual so switching what, from one thing to another, uh, Stephen, it actually uh, shoots an endorphin. Yes. Wow. Aside from uh, programming us for a short attention span, really? you, you never heard of attention deficits oh, sure. prior to right. television. Yeah. Television uh-huh. is the main culprit here, and it's because of how we have been educated to see. It was a gradual transformation, uh, and with um, uh, the quick cutting, it has it's changed us. So the it's cutting itself, system. the switching of a picture to another picture quickly, yeah. releases an endorphin. And so the more you get, the more you want. Hmm. That's yeah, it, it's, and that's why TV is addictive. Uh-huh. Very Literally. interesting. Literally. And, and not only TV, but they, uh, this was discovered in the days of radio, the, the episodic story, the soap opera. Sure. Uh, people got addicted to the format because they wanted to know what was going to happen next. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's the pure storytelling, the Joseph Campbell idea that was so magical. But so... That would make sense then, the kids watching a lot of TV, a lot of games, where is it then that their brain needs to have this constant stimulation so then they 
Twitter and yep. cell phones, and and then that's where the attention deficit comes in because they need more juice. They need more um, uh, getting their senses acted upon. Yes, and that, and then that's why a young child away from TV, although they can sit uh, without moving while watching, they get all this nervous energy because they're looking to get that same kind of fix away from. Uh, uh, TV and other activities. So then adults the same way have a hard time sitting still. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we've grown up with this, and it's worse for uh, the younger people. Uh, uh, it's more difficult for them than it is for uh, for our generation. With who, that's a little, so that, that, a that, older. that does play into the hands of the powers that were who want to control what you've made the argument for over the last hour because... Uh, it's easy. It's easier than to, to feed stuff what you want, isn't it? Yes, and it causes a disconnect from one generation to the next, so that uh, they're not young people are not listening to what uh, uh, older people who've uh, 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 about their past. So it's disconnecting them from their past because. Uh, and why do they? And, and, uh, why well, the, it, go ahead. Uh, well, the, the point being is that it, uh, it it aids and facilitates what the this ruling elite doesn't uh, uh, wants to have that kind of disconnect. And they do it just just because of controlling the mind. Yes. So then the mind of the child does not want to sit still long enough to to really dig into truth. Well, it, it, it can't because can't. It, it can't focus. It, 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 it we become uh, the mind servant rather than it being our servant. Uh-huh. My, my, many people can't even uh, uh, keep their mind quiet for any length of time. Try to keep your mind w- uh, without having a thought for five seconds or ten seconds, and for many people, it, it's practically impossible to do that. Yes, and then then you're not seen. Or it's seen trying to look at what's really there. It's it's just regurgitating of something that you've already heard or something. Well, yeah, we, we're looking, we're seeing the world through the colored glasses of our programming and conditioning. So we're not seeing things as they are. We're seeing things as we are. Well, I think throwing out the TV then, Stephen, would be a good thing to start with. I, well, I, it's <laughs> it, it's a it, it's a good first step, but the damage has already been done, and for many people, uh, the, the the medium. The technology is neutral. It could be used uh, to cause a massive shift and uplifting of awareness and consciousness in the population. And that's the only thing that is going to resolve all these problems. We're not going to fix things uh, with Band-Aid measures, try to fix the economy, try to fix education, try to fix this or that. It's not getting at the core fundamental issue yes. and that's the spiritual issue that dimension the missing dimension in world politics is the spiritual dimension i think you're on to something and and then when you when you uh, and we're out of time but when you foster the idea of a democracy which is not what this is it's really a republic it's easy to get uh the majority of the people to vote for if you, if you promise them stuff yes yes <laughs> and then you can train these guys 51 percent pretty easily huh well, yeah. we're in for some interesting times, and I, I think you're really onto something. I want to put words in your mouth, but in these next few years, we're going to have to stay awake and stay clear to to not get sucked up with whatever's going to be going on in the next few years. That's it. We've got to wake up. Wake up. So it's mindcontrolinamerica.com. Stephen Jacobson, thanks so much for hanging out with us. We really enjoyed having you on the show. Well, thank you, Patrick. It's been my pleasure uh, being with you and your, and your listening audience. Thank you, sir. Well, yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I received a a blast from Mitch Batros yesterday that the sun is turning and uh, the M-Class flares are going to be coming our way again in the next few days. And then, as happened about a month ago or whenever Japan hit, after that, then the X-Class flares come. And then after that, Mitch Batchel says there's going to be some more major earth changes. So look for some of those if Mitch is right and if the scientists are right in the next uh, days and weeks to come, more major earth changes if we, in fact, get 
some more of these X-Class flares that we got one day before the Japan quake. About 24 hours, wasn't it? So, hold on, fasten your seatbelts. We're going to talk about herbs and keeping the old brain clear tomorrow and the mind clear with Chris Gessa. And Open Phone Friday on Friday, Andrew Goss on Saturday at 6. I love you all very much. Thanks for your ongoing support. Emotional and with those things called dollars, Patrick Timpone. See you tomorrow morning. Take care. From the Hill Country in Texas, this is OneRadioNetwork.com.